So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all are having a wonderful time. And now I would like to take the show forward for our next session, which is called Using Technology to Make People Healthier. I don't need to even explain the topic. It is self-explanatory. But ladies and gentlemen, in this, we are going to talk about the new developments in tech that can make people live healthier and longer. That's exactly what we are aiming for. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the session using technology to make people healthier. And for that, I would like to invite our moderator for today, Mr. Deepak Prem Narayan, Executive Chairman and Founder, ICS Group of the Introduction. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would request Mr. Deepak Prem Narayan to also introduce the speaker. But before that, I would like to give you a quick a bio about yourself. Mr. Deepak Prem Narayan, the ICS Group has interest in asset management, financial services, and the retail sector. The group is headquartered uh, having problems. offices in Delhi, Bangalore, Johannesburg, and Cape Town. He is also the past president of IMC. And apart from that, his current association are as chairman of the United Nations Women Business Sector Advisory Council India. Convener of India South Africa CEOs Forum, committee member of All India Management Association, managing committee member of IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry, actively associated with the First Rand Bank, to name a few among the various area of positions and association that he is actively involved in. So, ladies and gentlemen, we start with our next session, and I would request. Mr. Deepak Prem Narayan, sir, to please conduct the session and also introduce the speaker. Over to you, sir. So you're, uh, you're mute. Yeah. I said I'm having a bit of a technology problem. Just give me half a minute. Okay. Can you see me now? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not able to get the background that I would have preferred. Okay. But Barry, it's great to have you. Can you hear me, Barry? Okay. The, just bear with me for a second more. Just a second. We we're talk, going to talk about discoveries, technology, success, Barry. Yeah, the, uh, uh, if I may, firstly, many, many thanks, uh, Barry, for uh, joining in today at IMC's request and my personal request for this uh, conference. The summit, as you're aware, it's focusing on innovation and technologies in the healthcare sector, and insurance is a core of the uh, spine, let me put it that way. Uh, Friends, uh, Discovery uh, has been rated globally as one of the most innovative uh, and technology-oriented company in healthcare, in life, and motor. It is for, for this reason that in an advanced country like China in artificial intelligence that you have Ping An, which has partnered Discovery. That itself, the proof of the pudding lies in its eating. Uh, Barry, I couldn't think of anyone better than Discovery to talk today. And because you're the Virat Kohli of this particular sector, I'm sorry that possibly you may not like Virat Kohli because South Africa has lost to us in the recent past in cricket. Okay. Barry is the co-founder of Discovery um, with Adrian Gore. And both of them are actuaries. Discovery was founded about 31 years ago. And Barry also specialized in mathematic, mathematical statistics. The success lies that today it is in 22 countries. And it's a market leader in many of the countries within a short period that it enters. Uh, they have created a market cap between Discovery Insurance and under Barry's leadership. They entered banking also. Uh, they have a market cap all put together in the region of almost $10 billion. Barry, 
I remember a story about you and Adrian. When you passed out, you had joined Liberty Insurance, which was South Africa's leading insurance company, and even today is a big player. Uh, and at that stage, both of you came up with a proposal that instead of having a health policy which covered specific amounts for different sectors, less, uh, headings, X amount for dental, X amount for ophthalmology, et cetera, what you said was, let's have a common thing. And because otherwise under dental, et cetera, it would expire or the customer or the client at the end of the year would take advantage of that. Barry, uh, your entire discovery model, which you're going to speak about, has been built on wellness. And in the earlier meeting just now, uh, somebody spoke about wellness, but uh, it was passed on because wellness is your backbone on which you have incentivized uh, your clients to have better health and pay lower insurance premiums, therefore leading to lower claim ratios and where you are the market leader globally. Let's say if the average is 16%, you are at almost uh, about 25, 30% lower than that, if I'm not mistaken, you, I'll stand corrected. The, and this leads to fewer deaths, fewer illnesses, fewer claims, fewer lapses, and a healthier society and higher productivity. Barry, uh, I guess I can keep talking about discovery, vitality, but I'd like to hand over to you. And I'd also like you to talk about uh, new technology, what it's going to do uh, uh, to healthcare. I'll leave a thought with you on the table, very quickly, two thoughts. Uh, the other day, uh, which is going to come up a little later in the session, the next session, is that Google has worked on artificial intelligence. And the idea was go for diabetic ophthalmology. Now, opto opto uh, ophthalmology, let's put it that way. And what they discovered was when they looked at the retina, they could say that this particular owner of the eye or the retina would get a heart issue five years from then. It also came up with a whole lot of other solutions for doctors, okay? The, it also came up with a whole lot of other solutions for doctors to be able to forecast a customer's illness or a patient's illness almost 48 hours in advance. So are you taking that into account also, Barry? Now the stage is yours. And uh, I'm going to watch you as the, as the empire. And uh, I'll come in a little later with some more uh, questions from the house and maybe one or two from my side. Thanks, Barry. Ipek, uh, thank you very much for the introduction, very kind introduction. And uh, thanks for the invite for today. And I'm very happy to be speaking to the audience today. I'd just like to share um, a presentation I'm going to go through pretty quickly and then have some, some time for um, some, some time for questions. Please let me know if you can see and hear me, uh, see the presentation and hear me. Everything all right? Yes, sir. So what I'd like to talk about is, is the role of technology in making people healthier. And the way we do it is through insurance. We call our business model shared value insurance. And it really started, as Deepak said, several years back in, in the early 90s, um, where in South Africa, there was an undersupply of doctors and hospitals. So we were forced in a way, you know, as a health insurer, to focus on the consumer and not focus on the supply of healthcare. So you're focusing on the demand for healthcare. And what drives the demand for healthcare is wellness and prevention, keeping people out of the healthcare system so that they remain healthy and don't require access to the healthcare system. That was our focus, because as I said, it was very difficult to make a market out of the supply of healthcare. So we became a, a very much a company focused on our whole core purpose was making people healthier and enhancing and protecting their lives. And what we saw was there were three main things driving or three main trends driving the market at that time. First of all, the nature of risk was changing from infectious disease to diseases of lifestyle. So people today, I mean, specifically in India, people suffer 
They're all markets. People suffer from diseases of lifestyle. I know in India there's a, a problem with, you know, diabetes example. These are diseases of mostly diseases of lifestyle. Of um, sure, it, sometimes it is hereditary, but effectively the nature of risk is changing more to, to diseases of lifestyle. Also, what is happening, the key trend is improvement in technology. Today, people can monitor themselves far more effectively than they could years back. Uh, they can have uh, wearable devices and the, the you know, the uh, understanding oneself all the time um, is, is enabled today with technology. Access to, uh, to doctors and information is enabled with technology today. And the third is the corporate purpose is changing today. People are not focused purely on returns and shareholder returns and that but a, a purpose of doing good for society and improving uh, the lot of, of people in society. How do you actually do it? And moving away purely from a profit motive to, to something that is broader and have a greater perspective. So we intersection of these three trends of the change in the nature of risk to lifestyle, the, the improvement in technology and corporate purpose led us to thinking what we've got to do is focus on the individual and the individual lifestyle. And if you think about it, there are four really lifestyle behaviors, which is lack of exercise, poor diet, uh, smoking, um, excessive alcohol, et cetera, four lifestyle behaviors that lead to four main conditions. That is represents about 60% of deaths worldwide. So if you can change those lifestyles, improve, incentivize people to leading a better lifestyle, you can extend life expectancy. And this is what we call the shared model because there are two organizations that can share uh, value created out of wellness. One is the government. And secondly is insurance companies. Why can insurance companies do it? Because they are receiving a risk premium. So once they are receiving a risk premium, if there's better health and incentives for better health, uh, then there are fewer deaths, fewer illnesses, lower claims, lower lapses, there's value created in the system that can be shared back with the member. And you create this virtuous cycle, which is not only good for the member and for the insurer, but it's good for society as well. So as I said, that is really driven our core purpose of making people healthier and the impact of that on insurance businesses. And it not only applies to health insurance, as you would think in life insurance, but applies to short-term insurance and motor insurance and banking as well. And that's exactly what we've done as an, a company, as an insurance company. We've created the very strong link between the client, the client's behavior, and insurance markets, financial services markets. And we were the founders of this idea and the pioneers of this idea uh, in South Africa and the UK. And now through a company, one of our subsidiaries called Vitality Group, uh, we are the pioneers of this around the world of linking an individual's behavior to financial services markets. And it's created the largest B2B tech platform. And the way we do it is through technology, through creating this platform, we create enormous value for our customers. Um, and our customers in this case are insurance companies, transforming their business, increasing sales, reduction of customers, reduction in risk, and ultimately value for our members as well, enhancing their wellness, um, incentivizing them to improve their behavior and sustained healthy behaviors and giving them discounts on products and services. And once you're doing those two things for both insurance company and their members, you're creating value across uh, the entire value chain. And we've done this via creating what we call our V1 platform or Vitality One InsureTech platform that enables everything to happen along this platform. Because there's so much that happens in a person's daily life that you need to influence, exercise, and diet, and sleep, and um, all aspects of an individual, 
if you look at try and look at that individual, you want to create one single platform that impacts a person for all their behavior and not just a single behavior, not just focusing on a single behavior. And that's why we created this platform. And it's got incentives and behavior change and a data aspect and pricing for insurance, et cetera. And what we're trying to do through this platform is enable the insurance company to link to the ultimate client through this uh, behavior change platform. And it, you know, it's simplistic up front to, to, uh, to think about it. The implementation of it is quite uh, complicated and complex. To incentivizing behavior change. Once you create an incentive program, behavior change program, it is exceedingly important to understand the person's behavior, put incentives to change that person's behavior and continue to monitor that, that person's behavior. And once you're doing that to create a um, huge amount of relevant data of an individual and the behavior, and the impact of that data on that individual on life insurance risk. So you need to understand that in the long term. That's what we've created through this platform. And we've rolled this idea out to 27 markets around the world of the link between a person's behavior, an individual's behavior, and their financial services risks. And just talking about your region there in, in Asia, uh, we have partnered as Deepak was saying earlier on with in, in, in China with a company called Ping On, where we bring in this company together with Ping On. Ping On, as you know, is the largest insurance company in the world, and they're using elements of our intellectual property to incentivize their clients to change behavior and then understanding that link to insurance. We also do that with AIA in Southeast Asia. Um, and they are represented in about 17, 18 markets around the region. And we've partnered with them in several countries within Asia to bring this intellectual property, this understanding of their clients, of leading healthier, longer, and better lives that AIA are focusing on and the link with that, them and vitality. So Deepak, that's just a quick overview of our uh, our model and um what we're attempting to do um in uh, in uh, in south africa and the uk and around the world and the link between uh, an individual's behavior and insurance risks i thought i'd give you a little bit of background before uh, i address some questions uh, barry is it possible for you to talk about technology in terms of some of the innovations that are happening through more an anecdotal route and to say that how you're imbibing that in the vitality route. Um, I, for instance, uh, you know, when Adrian and you went across to the Rackets Club 30 years ago and you wanted to get uh, the membership from there and actually how things turned and how that has benefited discovery. So a couple of more things, uh, Adrian, and then uh, we have enough time to go in for some questions. Thanks, Deepak. So yes, so as I said, our technology that we are using is what we've created this idea of this vitality platform that linked to all uh, digital devices that people wear on an ongoing basis. So whether they are going to a gym or wearing a wearable device for, for training or using uh, things like um, Zwift or Peloton, any aspect where an individual is engaging in exercise and using electronics at the same time. As soon as you understand that, that you're getting that information of them exercising um, and, um, and uh, uh, getting information, whether it's heart rate data or step data or access to a healthcare facility, a wellness facility or exercise facility, we can get all that information. We get all that information onto our platform. So we suck that information in and we understand every aspect that is happening on for, for, for exercise. So whether it's, as I said, whether it's step or heart rate data or, you know, all aspects associated with exercise, we're getting that information. Also, we're getting information on diet. So we link up to 
um, to grocery companies and, and the like and get information about what people are purchasing when they go into to a grocery store to purchase their, their, their goods. What kind of goods are they purchasing? How much of that is healthy versus non-healthy? What kind of goods are they purchasing? And we actually get that information. Also, we get information on sleep. Barry, Barry, if I may, at this point, just ask you a question, if it's all sure. right. Look, now that Discovery has a bank also, and you've got your credit card. So what would effectively happen is that if I use a Discovery credit card, and I go to the grocery store, so you would pick up the items that I've bought, and you'd be able to link that up with Vitality. Correct. So all, these, all this information from a grocery store, I would, we would understand what are you purchasing that is healthy versus not healthy. It's very important that, because every item in a grocery store, say there are 30,000 different items that you can get in a grocery store, you've got to analyze which of those items, those 30,000 items are healthy, good for you, versus that shouldn't be purchased or that are not as healthy. So for example, if you're purchasing apples, that'll have a high health content, if you're purchasing uh, a sugary carbonated sodas, that has got low health content. So we understand every single aspect of the purchases that individuals are making. Not to say that they will necessarily eat that in that, those goods, right? So we don't know what they actually consume, but we certainly know what they purchase. What they purchase is likely what they will be eating as well. So we can link and understand not only exercise, which is important, diet, sleep, mental health, and a person who needs to go for the annual consult and check. So as soon as you get in all that information, you get in a 360 view of that person, right? From, as I said, all aspects of the person's behavior, you incentivizing behavior change, and then we understand the link between that and risk, insurance risk. So all that information, that data, needs to be accumulated in one area that you need to understand the link of that individual. And that is what our platform does. So Barry, tell me, uh, would your wife know through your credit card the amount of wine that you buy? <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, would she also know that you're buying double the groceries? Yes, I mean, so as long as we, we link to, to grocery stores, large chains, as long as you're... Sure. Purchases are happening at the, the, those large chains. We understand exactly what what is healthy and what is not healthy that you're purchasing, and then we can link that to the, your underlying risk. And that has an impact on my insurance premium. Yes. So if you are exercising and if you are eating healthily and if you are going for your annual screens, you are effectively exhibiting a better risk than person who's not, right? It's obvious. Most insurance businesses, Deepak, underwrite initially. When you take out the policy, you, there's an assessment of your risk. Sure. There's not an assessment of the risk on an ongoing basis. So through this mechanism, effectively, you're assessing an individual's risk on a, on a long-term, a lifetime basis. So it gives you far better insight into your risk, not to the detriment of the client, never ever to the detriment, only to the benefit of the client. Barry, in terms of keeping ahead of uh, com competition, how much do you spend uh, in terms of technology per annum? Is it $10 million? Is it $50 million? What do you spend? That is one. Secondly, have you got into, uh, in the healthcare segment, any startups which are coming up with cutting edge technology, which is better for helping hospitals, nursing homes in terms of diagnostic and where you could tie up and therefore you would be able to understand your customer's health. So these are two questions I'm posing to you. The so Deepak, on in terms of our investment in technology, I mean, we have always been a significant investor in technology. I can't give you the dollar amount right sure. up. But you can give it to me in rent. We are a significant investor, so we we okay. we we, sure. we don't take everything to profitability. We grow, and we understand that we need to invest all the time. I mean, specifically in wellness, it's a market and uh, uh, that is growing and developing on a continuous basis. The understanding of all aspects, the understanding of sleep, the understanding of mental health. 
There are so many apps out there. How do you link those apps to you? So all that, all that development is, is something that we are focused on. Now, it's important to understand that we are a funder of healthcare. So we are, we are not involved in the actual delivery of healthcare. So we are, market sits in the funding of healthcare, understanding that. We, what we do is link to the very best technology in terms of the delivery of healthcare. But our sort of mandate and our thinking is all around the funding of healthcare and how to influence that. So we obviously would encourage through funding uh, the very best and cutting edge technology. And what we do is spend a lot of time analyzing and assessing the value of that technology. So in the delivery, is it providing value, right? So if there's a new medicine coming out or a new intervention in the provision of healthcare, our role is to understand that it's creating value for society. Are they improving health, right? Increasing longevity and improving the quality of a person's you know, health or life whilst they are alive. Or the second thing that we do is creates a reduction in price and cost. Now in healthcare, it's complicated because sometimes in healthcare, you are improving quality of life. And in sometimes in healthcare, you're reducing costs. In the most instances, it's about improving quality of life. How much do you spend on improving quality of life? That is a very difficult assessment for you to make. And that's what we spend our time and energy on. So we sit very much in the middle, not in actual delivery of healthcare, but in the funding and understanding of all new technology that's coming out. So whether it is genetics or anything that's cutting edge, we've got to be able to, to, to understand it. Where it is interesting, and it, sp it speaks to what the, the previous speakers were, were talking about, is telehealth. Now, telehealth kind of fits in the middle. Because it's not purely about funding and it's not purely about delivery. It's somewhere in the middle. Because if you on funding, you can get people to start utilizing more tele, uh, telemedicine. And that's, I think, a very interesting development. Getting people to look at diagnostics at home, getting people to self diagnose at home, and giving that information to uh, a, a doctor on a remote basis. So, again, Looking at tech technology, but from a funding perspective and from a client engagement perspective. Okay. Now, thanks, Barry. Very, very interesting. Although I know Discovery so well, and uh, I've known you guys for more than 30 years. And uh, uh, let me share with the house over here that Barry's colleague, Adrian Gore, uh, currently the CEO of the group, also keeps dumbbells in his office. So whenever he has any stress, you can see that he is constantly pulling his weights around. The, uh, so that is the consciousness. Uh, Barry, uh, with this, uh, I'm having a network problem. So I request uh, Chitra or Selby to help me out in terms of anybody wanting to ask you questions. Uh, so there's a question from Mr. Juzar Korakiwala. What yeah. about privacy issues? That is the bank part of it, taking information and, uh, yeah. It's a very, very important question. It's a very, very important question and, and one that we, we uh, think about all, uh, all the time. And in our view, we would never do anything to the detriment of the member. So we only share information with that member, that the member and that client has access to their own information. It's never ever to the detriment of the client. So it's the client's own information. We would never share that person's information with anyone else. We only look at data on an aggregated basis. Um, and uh, the data is there for the benefit of the client, not for the detriment of the client. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Selby? Uh, no, no more questions, sir. Okay. Um, Barry, uh, look, to me, it's always fascinating whenever I have a conversation with you or your colleagues, there is so much to learn. Uh, the, is there anything else that you would like to bury? We have a few minutes in terms of the uh, other advances that Discovery is making. Because if you're in 27 countries today, I thought 22, 27 markets, 
tell me which are the markets where there is a major game changing happening in terms of consciousness towards wellness deepak it's a very interesting point you know um and what we actually finding that it's quite universal you know whether you are in developing markets or developed markets whether you are in the east or the west generally people want to lead a healthier life there is a interest in this there is people are conscious about this specifically now post the pandemic or during this pandemic because even with a, i mean which this pandemic is an infectious disease even with this infectious disease the people that are suffering more statistically are people in poor health uh so there is a consciousness about wellness which is universal absolutely universal people want to exercise more they want to eat a healthier diet they want to understand their ha- the healthcare status uh, etc improvement in sleep and i think this is, is universal the you know people are people no matter which, where you are around the world so there's a massive acceptance for it ironically you find like even in the us there's a perception of the us that people are you know there's a what the people have weight issues etc that is not the case people are not cynical people are involved are getting involved in wellness and trying to understand and improve their lifestyle so i really do believe that this is a universal concept about improvement in healthcare and health in and wellness and so we finding it working in all the markets that we in we understand you know the link between behavior and financial services really is working in any market and every market that we are involved in very okay. uh, thank you very much my fond regards to your colleagues at discovery in south africa and uh, i think now we'll get into the next session if you could be there for the next session which is virtually recorded it could be of great interest to you barry because of the two panelists who were there and the work they're doing in different uh, startups globally and the advancement they've done even in cancer and other things in terms of working with pfizer etc to develop specific drugs for specific clients or customers so if you can hang on uh, with this on behalf of imc barry thank you very much much appreciate and my apologies to you and the others for the network issue that i've had i'll take this opportunity selby if i might just go off now and link up with the main thing uh, so that then i can come in there as a panelist and if there are and you can link me up if there are any questions to be answered at the end of that session is that fine okay sir okay bye barry thank you thank you very much thank you everyone bye bye thank you sir thank you so much It was a wonderful session and it was an absolute delight to have you here on the show. And now ladies and gentlemen, it's time to take a quick break before we go to our next